Hey guys, welcome back to Guy's Stuff. Today we've got another one of my favorite recipes. Surprise, surprise. This time we're doing clam chowder soup. It is by far my favorite soup. On the very rare occasion I go out to eat, because quite frankly I cook better than just about any other restaurant I can ever imagine. So it's usually like a Friday, you know, go out with the wife, and usually it's soup of the day on Friday, clam chowder, so I've got to try it. But most of them are not to my taste. They're thin, they don't really have much of a clam taste, they're more like just thin, watery potato vegetable soup. So today I'm doing it right. This is a very economical recipe, unlike some of the other ones I've done. You can feed a large family for under 20 bucks if you shop right. Now this is only really wasting a little bit of food. We are only going to use about a third of the celery stock here. Other than that, uh, we're using everything up. I get my potatoes one at a time, buy them by the pound. We're only going to use four good-sized red potatoes in this one, two onions. Um, I did opt to get the whole onions, and I'm going to dice them up myself. I, I just can't stomach buying those, uh, you know, pre-chopped ones. You're, you're paying double the price just to do a little bit of chopping. And I want them usually a little bit more than they come in that anyway, so if I'm going to be chopping, I'm going to do it myself and save some bucks. We're going to use uh, some salt and pepper pint of heavy cream, just a couple cups. Um, most expensive thing in this is just the clams, and these aren't that expensive. I'm going to use four cans. These are 10 ounce cans, so about 40 ounces of whole baby clams. You can use chopped if you can't find baby clams. It's a pretty small difference. These are you know, maybe one and a half or two times the size of the chopped clams. They're not big. You know, they're, they're baby clams. And you do want to get them in the juice. We're going to be using some dill. This is really the only main seasoning that is going to be in the soup. This is a straight recipe. This is one that I don't really like to tinker with too much. Now, I'm a garlic fan, but I'm not putting in this one. This is just going to be a straight one. If you want to put garlic in it, you want to make it spicy or whatever, hey, go ahead, you know, knock yourself out. But this is just going to be a straight one. I love just regular clam chowder. We're going to be using half a stick of butter, and we're going to have some bay leaves in there just for flavor, but we're obviously pulling those out at the end. And a little bit of flour to thicken it up. We're not going to do a roux for this one like we did the bisque, but we're just going to add this straight in. It's going to be uh, more than enough flavor to mask any of the uncooked flour, but we're going to kind of saute it in anyway. And we're using a big container of chicken stock. You can opt for veggie stock if you're not a fan of chicken. And make sure you get stock and not broth. It's a total different level of flavor. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is chop up our veggies and basically start to saute them in the butter. What we want to do is pull, oh, four or five, depends on how big your celery stalks are. If they're on the small side, go ahead and pull five. And you just want to do the hearts. So we're going to cut off the whitish ends. We're going to cut off the fuzzy ends and just dice these up pretty small. You don't want them to disappear in the soup, but you don't want big chunks because the soup is about the clams. So, you know, make them a couple millimeters. And if you have really wide celery stalks, go ahead and slice them in half first just to get nice little chunks. Dice your onions and the potatoes you want to wash and uh, cut off any nasty bits, but you want to cube these into about half inch cubes. So that's the first step. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You don't need to watch me slice and dice. I'll be back in a minute. All right, we've got our celery and onions chopped up and the potatoes. Here at now. They will come in a bit later. Nice and finely chopped. They don't have to be absolutely perfect. What we're going to do is start our pan on medium high heat here and we're going to melt half a stick of butter, four tablespoons. In go the onions. In goes the celery. I'm just going to cook these down for a few minutes, saute them, get them a little tender, get them a little translucent, stir it often. You don't want anything burning. We're not looking to actually fully cook them. 
Just get them nice and tender, ready for the soup. This is going to reduce down probably about half. These are pretty much all water. And that is going to start to come out. Alright, it's been about five minutes. We got the celery starting to go nice and tender. Onions are reduced to about half. Still nice and fresh though. It's not getting browned or anything like that. Now we're going to put in our flour. You want to do this just kind of a little bit at a time. I've got six tablespoons worth here. We just want to mix it in a couple tablespoons at a time. Distribute it all over the veggies. This is just going to help it mix when we put in the liquids. This is going to soak up all the butter and help make our makeshift roux. All you have to do here is make sure you don't see big clumps of raw flour. That's all. Just get it moistened. Alright, now we're going to put in our container of stock. then in a bit just to get everything moist and again heat is just on medium high make sure you scrape the bottom it should have been stirring pretty constantly while doing that saute so there shouldn't be anything burnt just make sure all right now we're gonna put in our heavy cream, two cups worth, or a pint. And the juice from the clams, not the clams yet. So just pour in the juice from the cans. And I hope my pot is gonna be big enough. Should be. If I measured right, it should be just about perfect. You don't have to squeeze every drop out, but you do want the majority of this juice in at this time. One more. All right. We're also going to toss in the bay leaves. And they're just going to steep in the soup as we cook it. Gently stir this around. You can see now it's really starting to look like clam chowder. Make sure nothing's burning on the bottom. I'm going to kick my heat down to about a medium here while this cream starts to come up. That's really the only touchy part when you're cooking with a lot of dairy products is the heating. Can't go too fast or it scorches real bad. And I'm going to put in about a tablespoon worth of dill. One of my favorite seasonings. There we go. A little does go a long way with the dill, so if you're not a huge fan, just start with a pinch. But I love the flavor. It really goes well with seafood, too. I love it on my salmon recipes. Alright, give this a 
us a good stir. What we want to do is bring this up to not boiling, but you want a good temperature. You want to get it really steeping. So I'm going to stir this, and it's going to take probably a good five to ten minutes. Depends on how much you're doing, and obviously what size pan you've got. And then we'll hit the last part when it's up to temp. All right, starting to steam a little bit, so things are combining. Now it's time to plop in the potatoes, and here's where I think I might have goofed on the pot. And you know what? I am going to switch pots here, just because I know that this is going to overflow. I don't have room for the potatoes and the clams. Well, that's what I get for doing a big batch and not thinking too far ahead. So, un momento, I'm going to switch this into a much more appropriate container. There we are now. Plenty of room. Alright, time to put in the potatoes. And a couple things about potatoes. It's really easy to do them with reds if you like the skins on. You just cube them up. I tend to, even though I love red potatoes and I love the skins on for stuff, I tend to not like it for soups and such because even though I like the flavor of the skins, they can overtake the recipe. They kind of give that earthiness to it and this is really all about the cream and the clam flavor. So I did skin these and you can use a peeler. I don't use one, I just cut them in half and then just trim off most of the skin and dice them up. I kind of did these like fat julienne. They were mid-sized potatoes so after cutting them in half they were only maybe three quarters of an inch thick and I just run them down both ways with the knife and bada bing bada boom. That's all you need to do. Alright, now we're going to kick this down to medium low and it's going to cook for another 20 minutes just to get the potatoes cooked. You do want to keep stirring it every you know 30 seconds or so. You do not want any of the veggies or the cream to start burning. So set your timer, grab a beer, and in 20 minutes we'll be ready for the last step. And then we can start enjoying this delicious soup. 20 minutes have passed. It's smelling really good in here. The whole point of this part is to cook the potatoes, so make sure you test it. Just find a big chunky potato, press it up against the side, should be soft. See that mush is not like mush holds together, but it breaks apart. So you want it like good bite-sized tender potatoes. So that is ready to rock and roll. You can see it thickening up just a little bit. It's going to thicken up as it cools, so when it's hot on the stove it's not going to look like it will in your bowl. So now the last step is adding our clams. You can see the baby clams here. You know, they're, they're bite size. They're whole. Chopped is basically just cutting them in half. So not a huge difference there. Dump all four cans in. And last is seasoning. Now there's two schools of thought with seasoning. I am of the school where I want things fairly neutral coming off of the stove. With things like soup where individual or small portions are doled out, I want people to be able to season to taste. Now even though it's just my wife and I here, I tend to like a little bit more salt and pepper in my stuff than she does. So I'm only going to put five or six grinds of pepper in. just a couple teaspoons of salt. And that's enough to give it a base seasoning, but not go overboard. I don't want this to be all about the pepper. And obviously with just the dill in there, the main flavor of this is going to be the clam. And that's exactly what I'm going for. So when I dish this out, I might put another couple grinds on my individual bowl. She won't. That's just enough to give it a normal flavor there. Now with everything in here, we're just going to let it cook.
cook for another two or three minutes just to get the clams up to temp and cook them a little bit. We want them to firm up a bit. They don't take long since they're very small, a lot of surface area. So we're just going to let this go. I'll set my timer for three minutes here and come back. Time's up. We are ready to go. Just want to fish out our bay leaves if we can. Don't need those guys anymore. Well, I guess the other three are hiding, so we'll find them eventually. Oh man, that smells good. So as you can see, for about 20 bucks, you get a lot of servings. Mm. That smells absolutely delicious. Turn off the heat here. Like I said, when this starts to cool down a little bit, it just starts to thicken up. It's not like the bisque thick, but it's not runny. I gotta try this. Got a little potato in here, some clam. Ooh, it's hot. Mmm. That's good. Mm. Really nice clam flavor. Take this off the heat here. And once again, this is a recipe that benefits from a little bit of time. You want to just let it sit here on the stove. Actually, you're probably going to put this in and let it sit for a little while longer. The flavors really start to come together, and it's so good the next day. Little tip if you want to let it set overnight, let it come up to, or let it come down to room temp before you put it in the fridge. You don't want to put anything really hot like this. You know, put it in Tupperware or something, put a lid on it, put it in the fridge. That can really negatively affect your flavors. But if you do let it set and reheat it the next day, oh man, it, it really shines. And I'm going to let this sit here. Because I can afford to wait another half an hour before I eat lunch. I mean, it's really good now. But I know what it tastes like after just just a half an hour of sitting here on the stove, cooling down a little bit, thickening up, letting those flavors really meld. It's good stuff. All right, well, it's been another Guy Stuff adventure. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mmm. Love clams. <laughs>